Hi guys, Joe Hildreth here from My Heap. Hey, I want to apologize for the last video and losing the audio. I did change the uh, batteries in the wireless mic, so hopefully we won't have any nasty little surprises this go. All right, so um, in the last uh, installment, uh, we, or I, I guess I should say, put in the lead screw, showed how to adjust that, and uh, really the only thing left now um, is the tailstock. We've been through the uh, headstock and the change gears and the lead screw and the apron and well, the whole carriage assembly. So uh, we'll start out with uh, this. Now I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I've uh, I've had this apart prior to the video so that I wouldn't run into any nasty surprises and take up um, you know an exorbitant amount of time. So uh, obviously you know to take the tailstock off of the uh, lathe, and just loosen the clamp, slide it off, and uh, we're ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and completely take the clamp off. There's just a nut. I know my fingers are probably in the way. So there's a nut and a washer and a bolt. So there's the uh, clamp assembly. Uh, it's just square headed uh, carriage bolt with a washer and a nut. So and of course this casting on the bottom. So we'll set that aside. Okay, uh, next um, is the quill lock, and we can just spin this handle off uh, to gain access to the uh, screw. This is a quarter 20 screw, and it should just come right out the bottom. And then I'm just going to take and push on the lock. Well, I guess I can't. Uh, on top of that is a heavy washer, and I want to thank uh, Rich for making something from nothing. Uh, again for making these two pieces for me so I, I really really appreciate it and then uh, of course there's the quill lock is in there we'll get that out in a minute so we can spin the the uh, quill out of the tailstock mine has a little stiff spot I want to kind of figure out what's going on with that and it's right at the very end Okay, so it's disengaged and we can pull it out and set it over here in a safe place. Okay, with the quill lock out, I'm just going to take the edge of the bolt and I'm going to push up to release uh, that quill lock. And I'm just going to take the head of the bolt and push down to get this one to drop out the bottom. Or maybe it won't. So let's do it like this then. Maybe you just pull through. There it went. Okay, so the quill lock is just a cylindrical piece. Um, most of you probably already know this. That has a uh, circular groove cut out into the side so that when it's tightened down, it pinches against the quill, preventing it from moving. So, we'll put this part aside. Don't worry, Rich. I see where it went, buddy. We haven't lost the uh, washer. Thank goodness, right? <laughs> okay, so um, remove the handle. There's a lock nut. Um, just break the lock nut loose and take off the other nut. Jam nut, I should say. <clears throat> All right, and then there's a key on the handle, so we, I'm just going to put it to the top and slide this off. So the handle comes off, and then there's a Woodruff key. And then of course the um, the feed screw will slide out. So there's a feed screw and there's a heavy washer here. I would think that this would slide off, but I think there's probably a burr or something on mine. So I'll take a look at it later when I clean it up. All right, so that's where most people stop with um, disassembling the tailstock. Uh, but I thought I'd go a little further because um, um, I just want to see what's there and I want to clean it up. And I don't necessarily recommend that you do this. Um, you know, this this kind of stuff you probably should do at your own risk. It's not my fault, right? If you mess something up. But this little end piece right here is actually threaded into the barrel of the uh, tailstock. And what I done to loosen it was I wrapped some heavy um, 80 grit paper around the edge, and I took a pair of channel locks and squeezed it. And it took very little to break it loose. But that just threads in, okay? And uh, 
I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody take one apart like this or you know completely apart and you'll notice that there's an oil hole right up here so that we can oil and there's a corresponding oil hole at uh, the base of the threads here so that you can actually oil the shaft that's going through now mine looks like uh, I don't know that that's how that's supposed to be maybe that's before a special tool to actually take this out if you wanted to but um, it's kind of sheared off here on the side so I didn't you know try that and again like I said I don't know how tight this would be in on your lathe uh, I don't know that I would recommend you even taking it out I don't know that there's even a need to take it out so just kind of keep that in mind this is uh, just for, you know, educational, I guess, or, uh, you know, just trying to show how the thing is actually all put together. All right, so now we're going to move to the bottom. And when we look at the bottom, we see that there are two adjusting screws, right, that hit up against this tab. And, and these adjusting screws slide the tailstock forward or backward to um, align the tailstock spindle uh, on axis with the headstock spindle okay and here I'm just loose loosen these out okay and then there's just enough of a space right here that I can get a a screwdriver in just to kind of lift it up okay so mine is fairly rusty and pretty gunked up uh, both the top casting and the bottom casting so I'm glad I took mine apart uh, just so that I can get this uh, cleaned up and get the crud out of there and get some uh, fresh oil in there another thing that I noticed on mine is can you see that man that is bent so I'm gonna need to uh, fashion some sort of new uh, long set screw for that because that's uh, that is not gonna that's not gonna cut it and I tell you what I think I would um, like um, instead of slotted screws maybe cap heads uh, socket uh, you know long socket uh, set screws or uh, uh, some long square head set screws actually preferably 3 8 because you know most everything on the lathe is 3 8 so all right so that uh, is all uh, of the uh, tail stock except that we have a small set screw and I don't know that I grabbed I mean a, a lock washer here or lock the lock nut and I don't know if I grabbed a wrench I did okay and I'm just gonna loosen this up and this will allow this set screw to come out now I will say that on the um, on the original the set screw was um, Uh, a slotted headset screw uh, mine was broken so you couldn't adjust it so what I done was I took a, a standard uh, quarter 20 uh, allen headed or socket headed uh, set screw and then I checked it up in my other lathe and turned a little dog point here let's see if you can see that see there's a little dog point there that I turned on uh, my little uh, Dunlap lathe uh, to this is this is uh, to engage the groove in the uh, quill, you know, to prevent it from rotating. So, um, uh, not very proud of my machining job. So, um, you know, I'm a beginner. So we'll just 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 know that that's what I done. Okay. So there are no uh, further parts that can be disassembled from the uh, tailstock upper casting. So it's uh, it's ready to be uh, cleaned up. So now what I want to, let me set this aside. Now let's take a closer look at the bottom half of the casting. Okay. You know, we have uh, two set screws that of course adjust the, the uh, tailstock uh, across the lathe to set the center height. But this is a uh, kind of an interesting here. You see, we have, um, there's a gib, um, and I measured this. This is this is parallel. It's, I think it's about three eighths. I, I forget. And then there are uh, uh, some gib adjusting screws on the end. And I, I when I first done this, I thought, well, maybe this piece was tapered and this was pushing this one way or the other for adjustment. But that's not exactly 
how it works. Um, the gib adjusting screws are conical on the uh, side of the head and uh, they're so close to the edge of the casting that uh, as you move them in it would force this gib piece out and the holes that are drilled in the gib are uh, very sloppy loose fit for these screws so let's go ahead and take that apart so we've got two screws so Man, I think I've had too much coffee, guys. And this one here. All right, so those two screws are out. The gib just lifts off. And then finally, you have these two screws over here, and I'm going to pull. I'm going to pull these out so you can see them. Now, um, whoever painted this lathe last uh, was pretty sloppy with the paint, so uh, I had to dig paint out from around the screw to. Uh, uh, to, to even get them out. All right, so let me wipe this off a little bit. And let's see if we can show this. So, hopefully the camera will focus. You see here that these, you know, you have a kind of like a filister head, and then this tapers down, and then of course you got the threaded section. So as you tighten the screw in, you see how it has the. Uh, you see how as you tighten it in it would push the gib out or in right to adjust it for a good free sliding fit between the ways so that's how that works and there's one on each side we'll go ahead and take the other one out okay there's the other one and then I'll try to get a good close look. You see, if you look here in the back, you see how that's very, very close to the edge, right? And then we'll spin this around. You can see how the side of the casting is milled away. And then, of course, you see the larger end. So as the screw uh, enters in, uh, more and more of this taper are, is allowed to project uh, against the gib to, to adjust it. So hopefully that's uh, you know that helps. So really the only thing left here to take apart is to go ahead and remove my adjusting screws. Now obviously I know that uh, when I go to put this back together it's going to be way out of alignment and uh, I guess that will be uh, one of my first newbie tasks right to set uh, to set the tailstock alignment. This other one here um, I think might be better off to try to go through the with it and we'll see how we'll see how that goes I might have to get a wire wheel and clean that up a bit ah, it looks like it's shearing the paint right off all right so we'll just drive it through Okay, so that set screws through, and boy, does it have a wobble to it. So I'm gonna have to, gonna have to replace that if I hope to get any uh, adjustment. All right, so that's the uh, tailstock completely disassembled, guys. And uh, I'm gonna take this and clean it up, and then the next video will be uh, uh, reassembly and adjustment and that sort of thing. So, um, hey, look, thanks for watching. Uh, sorry about the food pot in the last video with the uh, the battery. Uh, hopefully. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do better in the future. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for your patience. And a uh, special shout out to uh, uh, Richard Cox and, and, uh, and uh, Jeremy Gagnon, Gagnon um, for some uh, help that they've, they've um, done for me. Or, you know, some things that they've done for me and some help that they've offered and stuff. I am very, very appreciative, guys. So, uh, this is New Year's Eve, um, December 31st, 2017. Uh, Remember, it's amateur night. Uh, be careful out there if you're going out. Uh, you know, people do really dumb uh, things on New Year's Eve. Uh, keep safe, right? And uh, and watch out for yourself.
So other than that, have a blessed day.